Welcome, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Way World Outreach Sermon. We believe that God's Word will make an impact in your life. If you would like to impact someone else's life, please visit us at thewayworldoutreach.org slash donate. We hope you enjoy the sermon. God bless. Today we're going to be talking about maxing out our vision and faith. And I really want to talk about faith. I'm going to mention the word vision, describe it just for a, for a second. It's the act of anticipating that which will come to be, the ability to see how things ought to be. It's a prophetic expectation. Is that I'm not looking at things the way they are. I'm looking at things the way they sh could be, the way they should be. I know I have some marriage problems now, but I'm seeing past the present and I'm looking towards the future. I see myself right now struggling with maybe an addiction or uh, some depression, but I see myself happy in the future. I see myself free in the future. I know my kids right now are not acting right and, and they're misbehaving and maybe they're not living for God, but I don't think it's gonna end that way. I got a vision. I got a vision that as for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. And I believe I have a vision that my kids are gonna be sitting right next to me. You know what that's called? A prophetic expectation. Right now I might not have a job, but I'm really believing that I'm not only gonna get a job, I'm gonna get a career. And I believe that God's gonna help me to be a blessing to his kingdom. And, and I see myself giving, I see myself tithing. There is a future. I see a future. It's called a prophetic expectation. It's a vision. And you know what a vision will help us do? It'll help us get through a tough time. It'll help us get through trials and difficulties and challenges because you're going to say this, I know right now I'm going through this, but it's not going to end this way. I see a victory in the future. That's called vision. And what Jesus did when he came to earth, he saw himself saving mankind. He saw himself, this is what he did. He saw himself being crucified, taking the price, paying the price for every one of us. But he also saw a resurrection. That's called vision. You'll never see in scripture that Jesus talks about the crucifixion and he doesn't mention the resurrection. He saw the whole vision. And then he saw us here in 2018, here in his house, worshiping here on the first month of the year, on the, fir on the first day of the year. He saw us worship and he said, it will be worth it. The pain will be worth it. The sacrifice will be worth it. If they are with me for eternity, God doesn't just see you here. He sees you with him for eternity. There's going to be a day that we'll be with God. God's going to make his home among his people people. Isn't that great news that God has some vision for you? So let's talk about vision a little bit. And this is a statement I want to start off with. Vision and faith produce miracles. They produce results, success, change, great ministry, healings, restoration, vision, and faith. It's not just having a vision, but having a belief that that vision will come to pass. Jesus had a vision of a resurrection and believed that it would happen, and it sure did. Jesus had a vision of a resurrection, and he believed it would happen, and it sure did. It just didn't happen for him. There was a day, there was a man named Lazarus, which was Jesus' friend, and he died. He not only died, he was dead for four days. They buried him. He was in a tomb. So now the news came that Lazarus died. Now, Jesus says this. This is what he says in John chapter 11, verse 11. It says this. Then he said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. Now, the disciples said this, said, Lord, if he's sleeping, he will soon get better. What he was saying, what they were saying is, why do we need to go wake him up if he's just sleeping? What they didn't understand is that Jesus was calling things that are not as though they were. The, the, Lazarus actually died, but Jesus had a vision. And what was his vision? To wake him up, to resurrect him, to bring him back to life. Why does God put scriptures like this in the Bible? Because it represents our hopelessness. Maybe you're in a place that it looks like everything's dead. You're hearing in your mind, it's too late. You messed up. You're too old. You're too young, you're too this, you're too that, it's all over. And all you see visions, visions of the present, visions of your struggle, but you can't see a vision of a turnaround, can't see a vision of a breakthrough, can't see a vision of you actually turning this around and God using it for ministry. 
This is why we're here. We're here to start getting the perspective of God in our daily situations, trials, and challenges. So now Jesus says, he's just asleep. I mean, he's, we're going to wake him up. So his disciples say, well, why do we need to go over there? If you just see, he was going to get better. And then Jesus breaks it down a little bit more and he says, and this is what he says. They thought Jesus meant Lazarus simply sleeping, but Jesus meant Lazarus had died. So Jesus has a vision, and I love this, of a resurrection, but he also believes it's going to happen. He believes he's taking action. And John chapter 11, verse 43, later on in that chapter, Jesus shouted. He's outside the tomb now. He's outside the tomb. Other people are crying, and Jesus is shouting. You know what he's doing? He's declaring his belief. He's declaring the resurrection. He's not sitting there crying like everybody else. He has a different expectation. He has a different vision. That's why two people could go through the same exact situation and one wants to kill themselves and the other one's here praising God, worshiping God, enjoying this moment, same exact situation, different vision, different conversations, different declarations. At the same tomb that everybody else was crying, Jesus is there shouting. And I'm sure people are saying, this guy's crazy. You know, when you get a vision from God, people think you're crazy. Like, how is that going to happen? You're going to say, well, with Jesus, the creator of the universe. Well, you can't do it. I know I can't do it, but I can do all things through Christ. You mean your marriage is going to be restored after all the betrayal and all the adultery? Do you, do you really think there's a turnaround there? Well, yeah, I can't turn it around because I can't even fix my husband because he's jacked up. He's addicted and I've lost hope in him, but I've not lost hope in God. So I'm done focusing on him. I'm done focusing on my kids. I'm done focusing on my ability. I've now put my faith in the power that resurrects the dead and that same power lives in me. That same power is available today because because we serve a God that's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he did there, he can do here. We need to believe that. That's vision. How are we going to be believers that don't believe in the supernatural? So what do you believe in and what you see? Well, I'm a realist. Well, you better get over that. Because all you're going to see is your real pain, your real hurt, and your real struggles. I know the struggle is real. But, I'm, but this is true. The answer is real. The breakthrough is real. Your God is real. Come on. God, there's, there's help. There's help. So Jesus shows up to the same funeral, and this is what he says. Then he, Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And I know he screamed it because it's exclamation point. He didn't say, Lazarus, do you hear me? <laughs> Can you hear me now? <laughs> he says, Lazarus. Come out! I, imagine how the crowd just went silent. Now this is what's real crazy. And the dead man came out. He didn't just come out. His hands and feet were still bound because, and back in those days, they used to mummify him. So he came out all mummified. Just imagine you being there. You would have been tripping. He didn't come out walking because he was mummified. He came out jumping. I bet there was some people running like, ah! <laughs> so then this is what he does. His face was wrapped. So he, didn't, he couldn't see his eyes. With a head cloth, Jesus told them, unwrap him. Let him go. So somebody had to get out of that crowd and <laughs> touch that guy. But before this miracle happens, before they unwrap him, before he, he, he raises from the dead, someone had to have a vision. Someone had to have a dream. Someone had to dare to declare it. And this is what God is saying. There's, you're, you got friends. You got relatives. They're not physically dead, but they're spiritually dead. They have no hope. And God is saying, the same thing I did then, I want to do now. I want to get people out from the graves of depression, the graves of hopelessness, the graves of addiction. But I need someone that's able to believe and have a vision for them and declare it. And I will do it. So vision and faith 
produce miracles. Vision and faith produce miracles. Let's go deeper into this vision and faith produce miracles. Another point I want to make under this. Anything is, anything is possible if we believe. In order, in order for something to be possible, we need to agree. Two ingredients. In order for a new thing to be possible, we need two ingredients. And what are those two ingredients? Anything and belief. So what, what anything's a, anything? Yeah, anything is possible. This is important. You have to have an anything. Your anything is your vision. So I'm asking, what's your anything that you're believing for? Anything's possible. There, anything. See, nothing is, imp- is possible if you don't believe for nothing. So nothing is possible as well. You can continue having nothing if you have no vision. So nothing is possible if a person doesn't have a dream. That means, you know what that means? Nothing's possible. You know what that means? Is that you could go this next year and get no breakthroughs, no turnaround, no changes, and see no miracles. Not because they weren't available. You just didn't have a vision. You didn't have something to attach your faith to. You need something to attach your faith to. Anything is possible. And look at this. Read it again. Mark 9, 23 says, what do you mean? Now, Jesus is talking to a man that has a, a demon. There's another impossible situation. This man has a young a boy that's demon-possessed. And, and has a, he has a, the son has a spirit of suicide on him. So every time the son walks by fire, the demon tells him, throw yourself in the fire. And the, this kid will throw himself in the fire. If the, if the son walks by a lake, the demon tells him, jump in the lake and kill yourself. So the kid will just jump in the lake, jump in the water to die. So he's struggling with this. He has to watch his son. He can't have his son leave by himself because if you leave him by himself, he's going to hurt himself or kill himself. And he's done everything he can. He's gone to the doctor. He's gone to the psychiatrist. He's gone to family members. He's done everything that he can. And the kid still is demon-possessed. So now he comes to Jesus, and then he says, you can help me if you can. And then Jesus says this, what do you mean if I can? Wait a second. Are you questioning my ability? Well, there's a problem with, see, you have a vision. Get this. You have a vision. There's your vision. You want your son set free. You want your son healed. You want your son sound of mind, but you got a problem. You have a vision, but your faith is off. To see that miracle happen, you got to have a vision with faith. See, when you have a vision and you don't have faith, you talk yourself out of it soon as there's difficulties, soon as there's obstacles, and you start saying, maybe it wasn't meant to be. Just because you run into difficulties and obstacles and you go to counseling and your marriage even gets worse, doesn't mean there's not healing, doesn't mean there's not a hope, there's not hope, doesn't mean there's not a breakthrough because you have to have faith not when things look good. You have to have faith when you lost your job. You have to have faith when you got a bad report. You got to have faith when your kids are acting worse. You have to have faith when your marriage is on the rocks. You have to have faith when it's real dark, but you're believing morning time is coming. And it might, you know, I might have some weeping at night, but joy is coming in the morning. I believe that this, what God says, is going to come to pass. Now that's a vision. Someone say a vision. So now Jesus has, Jesus saying, okay, well, you want your son healed. Jesus asks, what do you mean if I can? Jesus asks, what do you mean if I can? I can. The question is not whether I can. The question is, can you believe? The question is not me. The question is your vision. The question is your faith. Can you believe for a miracle? Can you believe that I could do I could do it, but do you believe I can do it? I can save you. I can set you free. I can restore you. I can help you. But do you believe I can do it? And then Jesus tells them, anything is possible if a person believes. Anything. So what is your anything? What is your vision, I'm asking you? A loved one getting saved, someone being set free. Now, I want you to think about this. The God is waiting for you to receive his vision for your family, for your future, for your ministry, for your purpose. He's saying, well, you, anything's possible if you just believe the vision I give you. 
Oh man, don't get jealous because someone else is doing good. God has good for you too. God has plans for good, hope, and a future for you. Not to hurt you, not to destroy you, not evil. God has a plan for you. If God did it for them, he can do it for you. Right? Get your vision. Don't get jealous. Get a vision. Loved ones getting saved. Someone being set free. Is that your vision? Getting through this difficult trial. Do you see yourself getting through? Overcoming a bad habit. Doing great ministry. Seeing a city saved. Do you see success? Do you see healing, etc.? What do you see? God is saying this. Anything's possible. Anything. What's your anything? And then the question is, when you get your anything that you're believing for, do you believe it? Do you believe that Jesus can do it? Well, it looks like it's impossible. And God says, perfect. That's what I specialize in. You specialize in the, in the possible. I specialize in the impossible. If it's impossible, God can do it. So let's develop this just a little bit more. We're talking about faith. What is faith? Faith is the confidence that what we're envisioning will happen. Faith is a confidence that what we're envisioning God do in our lives will happen. Where do we get our faith from? We get our faith from the word of God. That's why you came into this room, and this is what's happening even right now. We're, we're, this is what we're doing. It's a weird word. We're brainwashing you. You know what I mean by that? We're washing all the negativity out of you. We're washing all the doubt out of you. Come on, we're washing the past out of you. And then we're helping you put the right mindset. We're not brainwashing to control you. We're brainwashing to bring out the best in you. We're bra Come on, we're washing all the stuff that's limiting your future, limiting your breakthrough, limiting your vision, limiting what God wants to do in your life. Does anybody need some washing of the brain? Have you ever had, a, 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 when, back in the day, they used to do this. If your kid was cussing, you put soap in his mouth. That was crazy. Like, we actually thought we could wash the dirt out. Well, some of us need soap in the brain. You've been so limited, and this is what's happened. You've been depressed, you've been suicidal, and this is the reason. that devil does not allow you to see a future, does not allow you to see hope, does not allow you to see victory, does not allow you to see success, does not allow you to see yourself doing ministry, does not allow you to see yourself free from that addiction, does not allow you to see yourself happy, allow yourself to see yourself peaceful. Uh, come on, allow, your see, allow yourself to see yourself getting through it. I don't even know what I'm saying next. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, let's say Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith. Now faith, check this out. Has two ingredients again. It's being sure. Faith is being sure. Where's faith being? Sure, sure, sure. I'm sure. Sure of what? See, there it goes again. You can't have faith if you don't have a what. I got faith in what? What's your anything? What's your what that you're believing for? I'm a man of faith. What do you believe it for then? What does God show you about your future? Oh, man, I, I'm believing. This is what I'm believing for. I'm believing this, that this is 11 o'clock service. One of these days, we're going to have 100 11 o'clock services at the same time across the United States of America and then the world. I believe we'll have 100 churches open Way world outreaches in inner cities across the United States of America, full to capacity. I'm believing that right now, whatever challenges we're facing now are preparing us for our future. I see a vision. It doesn't matter how difficult it is right now. It doesn't matter what struggles and sacrifice I need to make right now. It's going to be worth it. It doesn't matter how many sacrifices we're making. It's going to be worth it because soon we're going to be birthing out churches in inner cities across the United States of America and bringing hope all over the world. How many believe that's a good Good vision from God. I'm excited. It's going to happen. That's my what. Now, faith is being sure we will get, we will get. Faith is being sure we will get. So you don't have faith in what you, this is not faith. You don't have faith you have a car if you have a car. I'm believing for a car. Well, do you have one? Well, yeah. Well, that's not faith. You have a car. I'm believing. No. I'm believing that I'll eat. Are you eating now? Well, no, I'm fasting. <laughs> so you can say one of these days, next Wednesday, I'm going to eat, all right? But, but faith is believing that you will get, that's future, what? Someone say it with me, what? 
what we hope for. So there it goes. You have to have a what. That's the vision. Faith is the belief in that what you're believing for will actually happen. You'll actually get it. It will materialize. This is what God is saying. Could it be, this is crazy, that your children will never sit in that seat because you don't have a vision of them sitting in that seat? Well, my son's in prison. It doesn't matter if your son's in prison. Why don't you get a vision? Of him? Come on, a vision of a breakthrough, a vision of a miracle, a vision of a turnaround, a vision of God using him in ministry, that God turns around was a horrible situation and turns him into a minister in the middle of that prison, that he comes out. He doesn't come out to go into the same mess he was in. He comes out as a man of God, preaching the word of God and impacting the world. Get a vision. You'll never be restored until you get a vision of restoration. Right now, we need to get rid of the vision of bitterness with, that we have with our family members. We got to get a vision, of, get, let go of the vision of unforgiveness. We need to let go of the vision of being hurt. It's time to let all that stuff go. That's not a vision. Looking at the past is not a vision. You know, you know what it is? It's a limiter. It's time to stop looking at it. Paul, Paul said this, I, I just made up my mind. I'm stopping. I just made up my mind. I'm not looking at the past. I'm pressing towards the high calling of God. There's something greater in my future. I'm done mourning over my past mistakes. I'm starting over today. Give God some praise if that's you, if that's you, if that's you. So now faith, now faith is being sure that what we hope for, that we'll get what we hope for, it is being sure, it is being sure of what, what we cannot see of what we cannot see. It's being sure of what we cannot see. Now, I'm going to give you just one step to increase. How many would like to increase your faith and your vision? Like I want, and this, this is very important because if you don't see more, you'll never have more. If you don't see more and believe for more, you'll never, you'll never see more. It'll be the same. Why come to church and live like a natural person? Why live that way? Why, well, you know, it's just, you're looking at yourself and you're looking at your circumstance. You're looking at your bank account. You're looking at your ability. God says, I didn't, I didn't see, I didn't move in your life so you could live a natural life. I moved in your life so you could live a supernatural life. Then when people look at you and say, man, but God, man, if it wasn't for God. Right? So I'm going to give you one way, and there's many ways to build your faith, but I'm going to give you one way. Expose yourself to visionaries and great men and women of faith. There's times you got to, you know what we're doing right now? Exposing ourselves to the God's word. We're exposing ourselves. This is what we're doing, expanding your thinking. You know, me and Lisa, we've been married for 28 years. Is that right, Lisa? You know it. I just want to make sure it was the right number. So we've been married for 28 years, and this was, we do not have a perfect marriage, but we have a successful one. I love my wife, and she loves me. Praise the Lord. We love each other. And this is what I can say. I love her more now than I did 20 years ago. My love has not dwindled. It's grown and grown and grown and grown. I, I have fantasies with, about her going on vacations and stuff about the future. I go, man, I just see myself with her and dying with her. I got a vision for my wife and my kids. And I got a vision. It's exciting. And you know what? Don't get jealous. I wish that was me. Here we go showing off about your marriage. You were married to the guy. I'm married. You wouldn't be saying all that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But we didn't start off that way. But Lisa didn't start off that way. We've developed into this vision. We're seeing a vision realized, but it started with a vision first, and then we see the manifestation of it. You, you know where you begin? You begin at the level you're at. We're all at a level. But no matter what level you're at, there's another level. And I'm going to tell you something. You're not thinking big enough. Wait, wait, pastor, what are you talking about? There's more. God wants to do more. 
His thoughts are higher than yours. He, you know what God's saying? say? It don't matter how high you think, I'm higher. I don't care how big you think, I'm bigger. Isn't that great? So now, visionaries. You know what? We, we need to expose ourselves to those that think bigger than we do, to those that challenge our thinking. We must always be willing to be part of something bigger than ourselves. That's good. It should be challenging. Visionaries will help us, and I'm just going to make two points on this. Visionaries will help us see what we can't see. Um, in 2 Kings 6.15, there's a man named Elisha, and he has a servant with him. And they're surrounded by an army. And the servant is, is really freaked out because this is what's happening. This army is there not to do exercises. They are there, a whole army, to kill Elisha and his servant. There's been a hit on Elisha. Elisha is not a warrior. Elisha doesn't have any weapons. He's a man of God. So the, the servant wakes up in the morning, and they're surrounded by an army of killers with a hit on them. So now the servant wakes up and he sees the, all the horses and the chariots surrounded him. And then he says, oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried out, what are we going to do now? We're surrounded. It's all over. And look what the visionary said. Don't be afraid. This is what Elisha says. Elisha told him, for there are more on our side than on theirs. Then Elisha prayed. Oh, Lord, this is what visionaries do. They help you see what you can't see. Oh, Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes. And when he looked up, he saw that the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses, chariots of fire. Now, this is what visionaries will do. What they'll do is help you see what you can't see. This is what we're here to do. You came in here, you thought there was no hope, and God says, there is hope. Someone maybe came in here and says, I'm just going to go to church, see what it's all about. And you, this is nothing like you thought it was going to be. And you say, whoa, I could get into this. God's showing you something. That there's more to life than you ever thought. Now, if, 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 Exposing yourself to visionaries and great men of faith can maximize your vision, then the opposite is also true. Exposing yourself to doubters and limited thinkers can minimize your vision. There's a time in your life that you got to clear the room. There was a day that Jesus came across another young girl. She was dead. And Jesus says she's asleep. And this is the first words he does when he enters the room. He says this, get out. Who did they say to get out? All those people that were mourning and doubters. What are you saying? I have a vision of a resurrection and you have a vision of a funeral. We can't mix right now. You know what that means is some of you right now, the things that you're believing for, you're going to have to get some people out of your life, not because you're better than them. It's every, they're messing up your vision. They're messing up your thinking. And after you're done with them, you're doubting. You have some unbelief because this is how human nature works. Human nature works. This is how human nature works. People want you to be just like them. So dysfunctional people, they want you to be dysfunctional. Average people want you to be average. And successful people want you to be successful. So that's why it's so important while you're fighting and you're believing for a vision that God gave you. This is why we show up on Sunday morning because we're exposing ourselves to the highest thinker in the universe. His name is Jesus. He's a creator of heaven and earth. And what he's saying, if I could expose you to my thinking, you can start thinking like me. You can start getting results like me. And if you start meditating, meditating my word, everything you'll do will begin to prosper and succeed. God is saying, come on, it's time to renew your thinking. This is important. And this is also, one last thing. There's not, you might say there's some people that need, and you're not saying that you're not, you're, I'm, not I'm too good to hang out with you. What you're saying is, I can't be influenced by you no more. 
You don't have to tell them that. You just have to just do it. You're going to have to do it because you're believing for a great miracle and you need a breakthrough. You can't be hanging around a whole bunch of dysfunctional marriages and you want to get your marriage in order. You're going to have to hang around some functional marriages, some successful marriages that are going to help you get to the next level. You can't keep hanging around your gossip group. Come on, you need to hang around a God group. Come on, you got to hang around some people with some vision. You got to go to the next level. Expose yourself to some visionaries. It's where we're at. But also, you're going to have to tell some thoughts in your own mind, get out. Doubt, get out. Jealousy, get out. Hate, get out. Unforgiveness, get out. Come on, you got to start saying, come on, come on. Pain, get out. Fear, get out. Anxiety, get out. Negativity, get out. Unworthiness, get out. Rejection, get out. Victimization, get out. You got to tell, see, you, can't, you don't have to receive every thought. There's a time in your life you got to clear the room of your mind to allow God's word to get in there and produce a new vision and new faith. If you receive that, give God just a little bit of praise because he's a good God. Give God just a little bit of praise. You guys are awesome.